What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis and this is TWA Motorsports. Today we are going to be working on the Tahoe again. And if you guys caught my last video on the Tahoe, you know that we have a leak. So we cleaned the carpet in the last video, but as you can see on the headliner, there is a leak. Now, there are three common places that these things leak. And I'll show you, I've got a step ladder out here because obviously I'm not tall enough. So the three places they leak are the roof rack, so there's bolts that hold the roof rack into place. The other spot, if your leak is closer to the front, is generally your OnStar antenna. And the last place is there are vents or drains for the um, sunroof. And they go from here down this pillar, and there's another one that goes to the front pillar, and that's four total, so there's two on each side. But I'm pretty sure that my leak is coming from the roof rack. I'm gonna take the roof rack off anyway, so this is just uh, kind of killing two birds with one stone. So I'm gonna show you today how we're gonna do it, what we're gonna put in place. But the first thing we need to do is we need to get the old roof rack off. Now, in order to do that, we are gonna need a couple things. I will show you in just one second. So the first thing we obviously need to do is take all the old bolts out. Now, what you're gonna need is a T25. Now, I've got it rigged up on my new DeWalt Impact. Definitely worth the money. Get one of these guys. I will list it in the description down below. I, I've used a ratchet my entire life, and this is like life-changing. But um, there's 10 total. So there's two in the front here, uh, and I've got my tripod trying to set this up so you guys can see it. I've got, there's one in the center and then two in the back. So 10 total, uh, five on each side. Once we get this off, then we'll get the roof rack out of the way, and uh, you'll kind of see what the next step is. But uh, not, not a whole lot to do here other than taking these out. And you may need a magnet if you can't get them out by hand. And you can see I've already taken the back one out. I, um, I was wanting to get the correct thread pitch and I didn't want to put it back in. And it's been raining here. And I didn't want any more leaks than I already had. So obviously I covered that up and this side is now loose. Now let's go grab the ones out of the other side and we'll get the roof rack out of the way. Uh-oh. Now we should be able to lift the roof rack off and uh, well, we'll show you what's next. Once you get the rack out of the way, this is what you are left with. So obviously we need to do something to fill these holes, but before we do that, we're gonna clean all this junk off and probably do a little bit of paint correction. So I'll show you that process while I'm doing this, but I'm just gonna grab some soapy water and uh, just scrub this off real quick. I'm not gonna get real aggressive. It's not gonna matter if I do because I'm gonna go back and paint correct these areas, but um, just grab a, a couple towels and uh, let's get this extra dirt off and out of the way.
So our next step is I've got some old junky clay bar and I just don't want to use good clay bar on this uh, just because of the area it's at. And you can see I've got a hole in the bottom of my sprayer, but we're going to use some old clay bar and just kind of clean up this area before we hit it with the buffer. And uh, chances are not a lot of this is going to come out. You might get a little bit of it to come out, but I'm just going over this this specific area. I'm going to do a full paint correction down the road on this thing. So I'm just trying to get these areas where these stains are at uh, looking a little nicer. But we're going to go over this whole thing with clay bar. And like I said, I know I'm going to get roasted in the comments for how bad my clay bar looks, but uh, I just don't want to use a good piece of clay up here. The main thing is I'm just wanting to get any imperfections out that I could smear around with the buffer. Alright, once we get it all clay barred off, and as you can see none of this came out, and, ch and it may not, and some people may not be bothered by this because it's up top, you're never going to see it but I'm a little more picky than that. And this thing needs a total paint correction. So might as well knock this out while we're up here. And I don't want to knock paint off of the things I'm going to be putting up here. So I'll show you that later on, obviously, but we're going to use some M10 or M205, sorry, M105 and a uh, microfiber uh, cutting pad. And then my Griot's polisher. Now, not the greatest polisher, but is it is the best bang for the buck. I will list both these down in the description as well, but we're going to work on these areas see if we can get some of this to come out now i remember on my last tahoe not a lot of that came out but it was also black so um we're gonna see kind of together whether we can get it to come out oh my gosh that's way too much so you want to use it pretty liberally and i probably need a new pad but this will work i don't want to use a brand new pad for this because well frankly this is a pretty rough area and these little buttons here are gonna help destroy this pad. So let's see what we can get out with just the M105 and this microfiber cutting pad. Now, as you can see, it took a majority of it out. Now, there's gonna be some areas where that thing rocked around because they don't set perfectly flush with the body that you're going to have some etching. There's a spot right there. Camera probably doesn't pick it up, but I'm pretty happy with the results as far as just going over it one time. Now, I'm probably gonna go over it twice and uh, kind of see what we can get. But um, I think that it's gonna come out pretty well. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna go over it one more time and then I'm gonna use some M205 just to kind of get rid of the um, the haze that the M105 left. Now on white, it's really forgiving. So you're not going to see that haze really. And it is on the top of the car, but like I said, I am super picky. So I am gonna go over it with a foam pad and some M205, which I will show you guys once I go over it one more time with this uh, microfiber and the M105. So now I've switched over to the orange foam pad and some M205. Like I said, this paint's pretty forgiving, but, I'm picky, so you'll never see the marks that this made, especially on white. Now, if this were black, you'd be able to see a little bit of haze, but like I said, because it's white, you'll never see it. But I'm gonna go over it anyway. That's just uh, kind of my process to, um, well, just to do it right. So we'll get this done and then we'll complete the rest of the roof real quick. Now I'm not gonna bore you guys with a super long time lapse of me doing this, but I wanted to show you the difference on one side. So this is two passes with the M105 and one pass with M205. And look at the difference between this etching and none. Now, if you catch it in a certain light, you can still see um, some spots. But like I said, because white's super forgiving, it's really hard to see. And it's gonna be on the top of the vehicle. 
Now, something that rides on the paint for a long time just etches the clear, and there's just nothing you can do about it because the clear's not thick enough to get it out. But it looks way better. We don't have this weird ring around the outside, and it uh, makes me feel a lot better anyway. So once we finish all up, I'll show you kind of what it looks like, and then we'll move on to that next step. Well, it started to rain on me, so I had to stop for a little bit, but the sun is out now, and we are finished up. So, like I said, two passes, one pass with the microfiber and the 105, then a pass with the um, orange foam pad and some 205, and it looks really, really good. So we got all of the uh, spot that you've seen when I took it off, and there's still some etching. If you guys, I don't know if you can catch it in the light, but you're just not gonna be able to get that off. And like I said, because it's white, you know, you're not gonna be able to see it. So now let's talk about what we're going to replace it with. Now the factory pieces are entirely too big. So here's what I've got. So this is the factory one that goes in and it's too long without obviously um, the rack in place. So what I found out is these are M6 by 1.0 as far as thread pitch. And I found that the standard license plate screw and I'll list this part below because this is the important piece. This is just a um, Phillips head and if you notice it's got a plastic collar on it. Now what I've done is these caps that normally go on your license plate, so this would be a license plate screw, and you would have a cap that goes over it to cover the screw. I'm going to be using this method. So what I've done is I've taped all these to toothpicks because I'm going to obviously paint them white and I've sanded them with some 600 grit. I went ahead and did that off camera. And um, you can do a couple different methods. The last method when I did this, I just used some push-in clips and the car was black, so it didn't really matter. They didn't need to be painted. But for this, obviously I wanted white. Now I went and purchased some factory color and we're gonna be priming these, painting them, and then clearing them. But at first, um, you need to make sure you put these into place. Now a length on these is three quarters of an inch. The factory piece is about an inch and a half. So we're going about half the size of the factory bolt that goes in. The other thing before we put these in, I'm gonna go ahead and thread these in because this can go on last and I won't show you guys the painting process. I'm pretty sure you guys probably know how to paint. Uh, the only reason I didn't paint these flat is because if you laid them down, they would try to peel when you took them off of whatever you put them on. You could put them on some wax paper, that might work, but in order to get all the way around the edges, I wanted to you know, do a little bit of different method. So this is just an old shoe box, some toothpicks and some tape on the inside and uh, I'm just gonna spray paint these, like I said, with that factory color. But before I put these in, the factory, if you notice, has a coating on it. So I'm gonna be using some Teflon tape around these before I put them in, and that'll hopefully keep the water out. Now, it's not guaranteed, but generally I've never had an issue with this. So I'm gonna go grab some Teflon tape, wrap these up, and go ahead and run these down all the way around the vehicle. So as you can see, I already ran one down. So basically, once you get the Teflon tape on it, all you're going to do is screw it into place. Now you wanna make sure I had this plastic collar on before I put the Teflon tape on. It probably will slide over once you get it in place. Actually, it will, but uh, better safe than sorry. So all we have to do is just run these down until they stop. And we gotta do this obviously 10 times. Now I'm not gonna use my impact for this just because I wanna make sure that um, we don't strip anything out. I don't think it will, but so once it's in place, all we need to do is go grab, well, obviously do the other eight, but go grab our new cap, our newly painted cap and put it into place. Now, before I prime these, I'm just wiping, you know, I told you that I used some 600 grit sandpaper on them. I'm just wiping each one of them down with some uh, like general purpose adhesive remover from 3M. 
This just gets all the oils that you might have gotten from your skin or any dirt, any of the excess sanding. Um, get that out, off there before you obviously paint. So once we get this complete, we're ready to put some primer on them. And I'm gonna do some primer and then the white and then some clear afterwards. So once they've dried off, I'm gonna move the box out of the way, but it's kind of handy to have these in a box lid so I can move it around and get good coverage on it. Uh, makes it just a little bit easier as far as painting them instead of trying to get around with them laying down. So I think this will work a little bit better. Anyway, we're just gonna put a light coat, light couple coats of primer on them. And I've came to the side of my house that's not as windy as the other sides. So I'm gonna let these set for about 10 minutes and then I'm gonna come hit them with another coat and uh, we'll let them set for about 30 minutes and then we'll be ready for some base coat. Holy cow, it's been 30 minutes. Time flies when you're on video. Uh, we are ready to put a top coat on this. Now I haven't touched this. This is a sandable primer, but I didn't sand it down. These do not have to be perfect. They're quite a ways out of the way, but I did wanna paint them white. So we're gonna just put a light coat, a couple light coats of white on and uh, so basically we'll do two separate coats, maybe one third coat, pretty thick. We'll just kind of see what it looks like after they've um, set for a little bit. But man, I keep hitting the bottom of this and they keep moving around. And I'm letting them set out in the sun in between time so they get some really good drying. I think they're gonna look pretty good. All right, we're gonna let that set for a little bit and then we'll follow it up with maybe one or two more coats. Well, we've got three coats of white on and now we're gonna finish up with just some clear. Same thing, Duplicolor. And uh, I probably will put two coats on this and I'll just show you guys me doing this one, but they're looking pretty good. I mean, they're not perfect. This um, obviously isn't a professional paint booth. <laughs> but I think they're gonna turn out pretty good and it's good enough for the top of the vehicle. I just didn't want these big black buttons showing on the top of the car. It would just look really bad and out of place. It's really hard to paint outside too because you got flies and everything else wanting to land on white, especially where I live. I live out in the country and we have a bunch of cattle, so. All right, I'm gonna let that set. I'll probably hit it with one more coat of clear and uh, we'll be ready to put those suckers on. Okay guys, so it is a couple days later and uh, I think we are dry enough, trying to hold this with one hand here, to pull these off and go ahead and put them in place. So, um, it did rain and so far no leaks in the top of this thing, which is good, but I'm still not 100% sure it's not the sunroof and if it is the sunroof, we'll uh, address that down the road. Let's see if I can switch hands here. So all we're going to do is pop those into place and it's not a perfect match but from the angle you're going to be seeing it at it's going to look pretty good so we just need to finish up put all of them on and uh, you can see there's still some rain left just trying to get it dried out but we're going to go ahead and put all these on and we'll step back and take a look at it so let's take a look at them all in place now like i said the match isn't completely perfect but it looks better you know it's not i'm not in love with the fact that like on the side i don't know if you guys can tell but on the side you can see those little buttons sticking up but it's better than just having a black dot there which is what was there and obviously you've got to plug that hole because otherwise water would leak into the car but tell me what you guys think i'm not i'm not real sure i'm not in love with the look of it but it does look better than having the roof rack off or on and uh frankly you can see you really can't tell from like the side view. I don't know, I, I, tell me what you guys think. I uh, So I spent quite a bit of time as far as painting those 
Uh, it would suck to have to take them back off. But anyway, guys, if you like this video, if you like this content, obviously, like I said, the bla the Tahoe Blazer, I keep calling it Blazer. Um, the Tahoe was not supposed to be a project, but it has turned into a little bit of a project just to get it uh, drivable. Now, I know it still looks terrible with those dad wheels on it, and we are going to be addressing that shortly, hopefully um, in the coming weeks anyway, and I will let you guys in on that as well. Um, I told you I wasn't going to put a ton of content out on the Tahoe, but I would like to keep you guys informed of kind of what I'm doing because it's going to look completely different when I finish. But if you guys like this, like I said, hit that thumbs up button. If you're not subscribed, go down and hit the subscribe button. And uh, well, while you're down there, make sure you ring that bell icon. That way you're notified every time we drop a new video. And stay tuned to see what we work on next.